We got a lot of Jedi. That I was allowed to use that many Jedi. Um, I mean, you better believe that I maximized that to the to the to the nth degree. The Acolyte is the latest Star Wars series taking place in the High Republic, about 100 years before the Phantom Menace. This isn't about good or bad. This is about power and who is allowed to use it. E.T. was with the creator and cast when it was announced at Star Wars Celebration Europe. Let's dive into everything they had to say. Frozen meets Kill Bill. <laughs> I'm I'm curious what that means. Can we elaborate? Is this a are we getting a musical? You're not getting a musical. Although that was Kathy's first question when I pitched it to her. She was like, "So a musical with a snow snowman?" I was like, "I was like, no, 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 no." The arc, the two sisters, like that whole thing. It was something that I related to on such a deep level, e even though it was a quote unquote children's story. There was something about that story that felt so universal to me. So I wanted to go after something like that. I loved kind of the reinvention of the villainess, you know, like as the hero. And I thought, God, I'd love to do that in Star Wars. You know, I would love to have somebody, you know, a character that 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 normally would be the quote bad guy, you know, be the protagonist. I loved the Kill Bill so much when it came out in the early 2000s. A lot of times you did still have female protagonists. Um, you would have um, issues between schools of thought or like schools of warriors. Um, I mean, sometimes you have like larger battles and, and all of that and, and those types of films, but a lot of times it is, you know, um, about like more personal relationships that have gone wrong, whether it's like master student or parent child, or and that's very Star Wars to me too. So in a Star Wars show that was taking place during a time period where the bad guys were the underdogs, um, and so there wasn't a big galactic war going on. It felt like then the war of this Star Wars was gonna have to be a spiritual one. It was gonna be, have to be one that was going to be fought between individuals and that their relationships were going to be the things that drove them to make particular choices. I think it's such a fascinating time in the, in the storyline uh, or in the timeline. I, I think that uh, it allows for us to really play with the moral ambiguity of the characters are just kind of what Star Wars has always been about, which is um, how the society that the characters exist in define them and how they might struggle against the constraints of their society um, and how you know systems of government can, can be uh, fraught with a lot of corruption. Um, so we get to tap into those themes too, even though it's a different point in the storyline. I'm doing this amazing project with like really great artists and like a director I love and like actors that I'm obsessed with. And then I'm like, no, I'm in Star Wars. You've gone from Chewbacca to now a, a Wookiee Jedi. Yes, which I'm beyond excited. I've always wanted to play a Jedi and uh, to play a Wookiee Jedi is just icing on the cake. To prepare for this uh, series was uh, so rewarding. I, I really, uh, I'm really excited for people to know more about Kelnaka, and uh, he's, uh, yeah, to, for me it was important to make him different from Chewbacca, and uh, I tried my best to uh, uh, do that in a way that uh, serves the story, and uh, hopefully I did a good job. Can't wait for, for people to see The Acolyte, which uh, being a mystery thriller is probably going to be a new territory for all of us, and we, we're here for it. It's just exciting that people have not seen this in live action before. I mean, truly, it's just it's just that. And when Leslie was talking about the High Republic, there was so much energy for it. Is she a Jedi? She's a Mary Allen um, Elder Jedi Master. That's got to feel pretty cool. <laughs> feels super cool. I got to say, when I go on set in the Jedi robes in the full makeup I always hum dun, 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 dun. like I can't stop doing it just because it's you know embedded in our culture I work the most with Li Zhangjie and that has been a highlight of my career for sure he's extraordinary and um, you know Korean is his first language and he's speaking English in the show and watching the levels of work that are happening are amazing people are gonna be very impressed 연락을 받았을 때 정말 믿을 수 없었고요. 어, 세트장을 가는 그 순간까지도 아, 정말 내가 계속 찍을 찍을 수 있는 거지. 어, 그런 마음이었고요. 세트장에 도착했을 때는 정말 어, 너무 충격적으로 놀랐어요. 이 눈에 보이는 이 스케일감의 세트장과 구석구석 놓여져 있는 모든 작은 소품 그리고 어, 저 캐릭터들까지도 
다 모든 것이 다 진짜 같이 만들었더라고요. 그래서 와 내가 극장에서 편안하게 볼 때의 그 느낌하고는 굉장히 많이 달랐어요. 이 모든 것에 다 정성을 담고 모든 것을 만들어내기 위해서 노력하신 이 많은 스태프들의 어, 노고가 그날 그 첫날에 확 크게 느껴졌어요. 그래서 와 스타워즈가 정말 어마어마한 그런 작품이다라는 것은 알고 있었지만 그 현장에서 그 느껴지는 그큰 감동은 정말 말로다가 다 표현을 할 수가 없습니다. I, I play a guy who kind of gets trapped into this whole High Republic Jedi scheme, I think. But yeah, I kind of have to steal Charlie or Daphne's lightsaber in order to, to be a Jedi, which I do sometimes. Yeah, or you go to the grocery store and you're like, yeah. I did that. Yes. I am playing a Jedi Knight, I can tell you that. Uh, I'm pretty badass, I'll give you that. He's a little bit full of himself, I'll throw that in there. Uh, <laughs> when you step on set, you hold a lightsaber for the first time. What was that moment? That was an intense moment. It's, you know, first and foremost, we got sticks, <laughs> probably for the first yeah, two so months. I've seen them, I've seen them like, yeah. on set. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, yeah, the sticks are even cool, I'll, I'll add that. Um, but when they bring the actual lightsabers on to the set, it comes in a briefcase, it's locked up, there's guards around it, it's a whole deal, right? I, yeah, well, yeah, I know. I was like, I don't know if you want to give this to me. Um, I have not broken one, thankfully. Um, it feels, you know how for most actors, I think putting on a costume can, can ingest you into the character in a different way. Taking that lightsaber up in your hands, it, it, it feels a certain kind of energy and power that um, is just innate. It's, yeah, incredible. Every day on set? Every day I'd, I'd like get out of my car and I'd be like, oh, I'm doing Star Wars, great. But the day I was given the saber that lit up, and I didn't know what color it was, and then it lit up green, and I was like, yes, of course it's green. It's so perfect. When people ask me about the timeline, my, my pinpoint is I go, how old is Luke? However old Luke is, that'll yes. help you navigate. Yeah. And this is the first time where I'm like, he's like negative 100. He's like, yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, when you start to try to think about the people who are alive during during our show, it's it's small. It's yeah. small. Yeah, but yeah. Then some people live to be like 400, so you're like, you, know, you never know. You never know who can pop some up. Pe some people do. <laughs> we won't say who, but we. <laughs> there are characters that are alive at this time. What is that?